think we're going to get started. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Shanti Payne, Assistant Director from the Office of Equity and Equal Opportunity at the Metropolitan Council. And I would like to call to order the November Disadvantaged Business, Enterprise, and Workforce Advisory Committee for the Green Line Extension Project. Um, i like to uh, welcome and thank our committee members and or alternates for joining us this afternoon. Um, and uh, just wanna provide a little housekeeping for our virtual meeting. Um, as always, please mute yourself if you are not speaking. If you're having technical issues, let us know in the chat and we'll try to help you resolve them. Please close all other teleconference applications because we know that this improves the meeting audio and visual. Um, and this meeting is being recorded by the Metropolitan Council and meeting handouts and presentation are posted on the project website at swlrt.org. And with that, um, I will turn it over to uh, my co-chair, Tyler Bishop, to do the roll call. Thank you, much appreciated. Um, I think what I will do with roll is I see I got my list of who is here, and I know last time people kind of trickled in as we continued, so I'll just keep running track of who's here, and Eli, I'll send that to you uh, once that is filled out. Um, the October minutes were included in the meeting handout for review. Are there any edits that anyone would like to raise up? You can mention it now, or you can email um, any edits to either myself or Ashanti as well. That's an option. We have also included uh, the summary of the subcommittee discussion, um, just for reference for those that were not able to attend that and were um, unable to attend last large group meeting as well. Again, if you have any questions or anything about that, please feel free to reach out to either Ashanti or myself. Uh, the last meeting, couple action items. Want to see if there was any follow-up needed from those action items. I know one of the things that came up, um, and we'll get to it later um, this afternoon, in terms of possible action item follow-up, would be um, discussion around uh, future meetings and planning. So we will get to that in a little bit. But does anyone else have anything else before we kind of dig in um, to raise up as it pertains to last month? Okay, I will assume everyone is all well and good. Uh, so we will then go ahead and move into the Green Line Extension Project update. Hi David, folks, this is David Davies. Um, uh, sorry, I was just starting my camera and my camera is not working, so I apologize for that normally I like to have my camera on, but um, I'll run through the project update this month. As always, uh, the director of construction for the project, Nick Dial is on as well. And we can uh, certainly answer any questions that you have at the end. Um, just run through quickly the uh, a brief project update, uh, seeing progress along the line. Um, certainly it's been a, a very busy construction season um and work will continue into the winter um but you know some things are gonna gonna slow down a little bit as we get into colder months i'll just show you give you a quick recap of of what we've been seeing lately um and jason if you want to just kind of cycle through every five ten seconds on per slide um starting as as usual down at the west end at southwest station seeing uh much more kind of fencing railing 
coming in, uh, being installed and, and seeing that station being more fully realized. Um, just as a reminder that at, at some point uh, in the relatively near future, one of the big milestones in that area is to be able to get um, Southwest station, uh, Southwest you know, bus operations to resuming in, in part of that area um, so that we can continue work on on other parts of the, the station area, parking, parking garage and whatnot. Um, another big uh, set of milestones as we come up on the end of the construction season is reopening roadways. Um, you'll see later Excelsior Boulevard and, and 70th Street here um, is one of those roadways that is due, I believe, to be reopened uh, it, this month, um, but laying down some of the final final work in that area. So a lot of good work happening to get some of these roadways that have been closed for uh, the, a good chunk of the construction season reopen. Uh, one of the other themes of, that you'll see as we cycle through these photos is uh, track installation um, and, and rail installation. Here's City West Station and the next uh, photo you'll see, um, of course, this is right by the 62 tunnel is welding of the of the track. Uh, so folks are getting some of that track work done in advance of, of winter um, and really enjoying seeing the progress. We've actually had some tours out at the tunnel area this fall and uh, the community has really responded positively to, to that general site area. Um, seeing the tunnel, seeing the adjacent uh, uh, Station area and and parking areas. It, it's been really encouraging for the Eden Prairie community to see that progress. And continue on um, again. Track work being done um, in the area in Minnetonka. Jason, you can keep rolling there. Uh, another bridge that or another roadway that we uh, plan to have. Uh, reopen here in the near future is Feltal Road. It's been closed for a long time, but the community is looking forward to having that connection back. And um, well, certainly a lot of good progress in this area. It's looking at the OCS foundations and and the bridge work final being finalized um, in Minnetonka here. Uh, after you've seen updates on the Excelsior Boulevard uh, LRT bridge for a long time now, and it's Really exciting to see the traffic reopen now to uh, in both directions under Excelsior Boulevard. Um, maybe I've even seen a, uh, a news story on uh, one of the local uh, news outlets this past weekend, just showcasing yes that um, you know there were some challenges with uh, nearby businesses, but um, folks are still really looking forward to the opening of the project and and overall very happy to have this uh, access restored um, so a lot of great work being done in this hopkins area and in, in the vicinity of the bridge to get that uh get that roadway back open blake road certainly continuing you'll see uh all of the stations underway and a lot of structural steel um, erected or or in process of being erected um, at each of the stations so uh, the communities really can um, at almost all of the stations at this point, you know, squint and see where they will be riding and how they will be riding, which is a really cool feeling to have. Um, bridge work, of course, still structures, a lot of structures being either uh, being worked on and and Louisiana um, getting some of this work uh, cleaned up and, and in advanced stages of completion, the LRT bridge in St. Louis Park. Um, where multiple bridges are passing over Louisiana. That's a big, big deal to see that one coming along. Another shot at, at Louisiana, just another a, a complex site that we like to take folks and and because they get to see a lot of different elements, including the station, the bridges. And uh, I think we've shown here in the past some of the freight rail uh, uh, structure elements that continue down to the south and, and east. Uh, just another example, uh, this is in at Wooddale of uh, the stations really being uh, much more fully realized. So having a lot of the, uh, you know, element, elements, uh, you know, soffit and fascia applied to the stations that can uh, show folks kind of like exactly like what kind what the stations are going to be looking like um, come come opening day. So. 
getting into Minneapolis, uh, a lot of work that this, this site will continue to be active during the, the winter months. Uh, we've got secant wall construction ongoing. Um, there's a slight pause right now to, to work on some other elements nearby um, with some grouting work, but we're, I believe, over 80% complete with secant wall uh, and pile installation. So uh, really good progress being made in that area. Um, and then, of course, as we go on to just to the north there, uh, the Kenilworth Tunnel, um, you know, closely watched by the community, but uh, we're really proud of the progress that's being made. and. Happy to you know show folks how this work is progressing and advancing uh, to the north and east, and of course how it'll eventually come back and and progress to the south and west where the sea camp wall is being constructed currently. Um, so a lot of a lot of it's very busy in that area, and we like showcasing that to the to the surrounding community. Uh, the Cedar Lake uh, Trail Bridge under construction. Um, some of the uh, false work that's that's erected that. Pretty, it's going to be pretty, I think, somewhat quiet there for, for the winter season, but the site in general will remain active. In the next photo, you'll see, you kind of see it here, and in the next photo, you'll see a little better work on the historic uh, rustic style W Works Progress Administration uh, cobblestone wall there um, and the channel closure that's going to be in place for the bulk of uh, winter and into next spring. Uh, some pretty complex uh, staging there going on. And so, um, a lot of eyes from the community, you know, as, as this is a well-traveled recreational path, but, um, you know, people are very understanding of the, the project's desire to, to maintain and preserve historic resources, um, you know, in such, in such delicate areas. Moving up to Bryn Mawr, um, again, station work just, uh, kind of continuing along, um, a station that really almost didn't exist at the beginning of this year. So, uh, community seeing, uh, significant progress um in in going from from mound almost mounds of dirt to to almost a fully realized station uh at this point Bassett creek valley um this is the neighboring station to Bryn Mawr, kind of near the linden yard site um you know it's it's certainly one of the sites that's still kind of in its uh infancy but a lot of work uh being done and and what we like to show folks is kind of the progression from a station like Bryn Mawr and then looking at a at Bassett Creek Valley and showing the difference and how that work is is coming along behind it so you can see in there the crews at hard at work and um you know in general the community has has seen uh constant progress in this in this uh in the freight rail corridor in Minneapolis and then kind of as we get to the north and east uh, part of the corridor, uh, continued work on the Glenwood Avenue LRT bridge um, and, and those uh, various structures, uh, you know, we're looking forward to getting this roadway back open next year. Um, folks are certainly interested and in, in maintaining a lot of interest in seeing the progress on this. And we, we like bringing folks out here to, to showcase uh, every time I've taken someone out here that the crews are hard at work. So it's a really uh, interesting site to, to continue to watch as the, as the work progresses. And our last uh, or first, depending on which way you're headed, new station before you tie in a target field, the Royalston Avenue Farmers Market Station, again, getting the structural steel up um, that, that, group is, you know, that neighborhood around there is really excited for this project and um, starting to see that station come alive is, is really encouraging for the, the business owners uh, around this, around this area. I think that's it. I just wanted to highlight, um, you know, we've talked about uh, some of the systems work, a lot of it being kind of in warehouses and material delivery, but just wanted to highlight and, and we look forward, as I've said in previous meetings, uh, showcasing this uh, transition from civil to systems because it really highlights the, the progress of some of the field work that's going on um, at some of the TPSS sites. Um, and, uh, you know, in addition to some of the material and equipment delivery that, that continues uh, just showcasing that this is that we really are making making progress in some of the turnover um, of segments and and areas from from civil to systems. So 
it's a good point to make and to reiterate to our folks. You'll see uh, this mentioned in next week's construction update that we put out, uh, just kind of a, a real symbolic milestone of the OCS poles that are starting to be erected um, along the along the corridor, which is encouraging. And as I said, it's all about showing folks what things you know that that things are really rounding into form and looking looking like a, a semi-finished project. Continuing that work, Signal House Foundations up at Beltline. So we've got systems work being activated, you know, all along the corridor, not just in the in the west side, but the east as well. So good news on that front. That might be a, a double slide, unfortunately. If there aren't any questions for the project office, I'll uh, turn it back to the chairs. All right. All right. Thanks, David and Nick. Um, we're moving on to our DB. DB Achievement Report, John. Good afternoon. All right, uh, slide 32 here. So um, we updated the numbers for the civil contract systems contract for their billing for DBEs. And then I've also attached the uh, progress reports for their most recent pay apps in the handouts. So if you uh, wanna take a look at that, feel free to go ahead. And then I also wanna share that the final pay app for the Franklin o &M, uh, contract has, you know, is currently on its route to being finished for review. So it's past my desk. So it's on its way uh, going through the rest of the other steps. So, um, and that should be the final pay app. And then um, we're working on the closeout memo and drafting that and putting that together. So that's my update for the DBEs. And then I'll hand it back to the co-chairs. I don't think there are any questions. All right. Next we have Krista, LMJB. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Ashanti. Thank you for the update also, John. It's nice to see um, the numbers that have changed a little. If you notice the um, civil portion actually increased with that. So it's kind of nice. But anyways, very busy month for us last month um, and continues forward. Um, one of the biggest things is, you know, was the, we did do um, last year, well, excuse me, last month was construction and inclusion. Um, week and we hosted during the week a DBE appreciation lunch um, and invited individuals not just from the DBE community involved in the project but we also had our LMJV team in attendance as well as um, various people that are working on our project from Lunda Construction. Um, it really gave the DBEs that were in attendance a great opportunity to build relationships that either were already existing, gave them more time together, or to create new relationships. And to ask quite a lot, they were very active with their questions and stuff. So um, it was it was a fun one and we will be doing mo more moving forward. Uh, we continued our individual team meetings with the DBEs regarding their questions regarding the change order process, you know, and other items, you know, to help assist the DBEs with their participation and their success on the project. I also had a great meeting with the um, with Barb Law with the Association of Women Contractors regarding the project and the various meetings for the project, you know, and the value and stuff and and what value, you know, that AWC actually brings to the project was which is quite a bit. It's a great resource for our DBEs and such. But also a bigger part of the conversation with moving forward is how can we the LMJV team you know, and, and others on our project assist the AWC with their members, you know, whether it be project presentations, education ses sessions, whatever. But, you know, this is this is a two-way relationship here and it'll really be nice to see what we can do to assist each other. 
And I do believe one more slide. And this one, I wish we would just make it bigger, you guys. This is the Cody update. Here's our you know financial update. Here's our owner change orders approved through October 15th. Uh, over 220 million and DB job site participation to date when that was run was 20.59, which actually is now 20.7. And that is it for me for DBE as of right now, unless anybody has any questions. Thanks. All right. Uh, APJB, is that going to be Mike or? This is Mark Bell with uh, APJB. I can speak here. Um, looks like for the next slide, there we go. So we're continuing with the uh, communications work at the uh, Louisiana and uh, Blake Road station areas. Um, that'll continue here uh, not too much longer. The weather will obviously kind of dictate that. Next, there is the uh, MBE with Myers and then MBE with Moltron and Bald Eagle. Um, we're continuing work currently at 304 and 301. Uh, the pictures in the slides earlier, that was showing our completion of the substation at Traction Power Substation 302. Uh, so that is done. Um, we're just trying to finish buttoning up these other two sites, 304 and 301. Uh, that work will figure till say mid-December. And then uh, we're we'll, we'll continuing with our uh, public solutions for uh, weekly construction updates. Um, next slide, if you would, please. Um, nothing changed too much on change orders um, since the, the last meeting. The overall dollar figures uh, been pretty, uh, been holding there. Um, we do have public solutions set for manhole dewatering. That will be for 304 and 301 once our access uh, will allow them in there. Uh, we are close now to finishing the remaining of the wide flange pole deliveries uh, for the project. Um, we did get a bunch of shipments in and we have just a few left scheduled. Uh, overall, DBE change participation is uh, as stated there uh, at 17.49 uh, job to date, a little over 15.36. Thanks, Mark. Any questions for Mark and APJV? Okay, if not, I will turn it then over to Elaine for workforce participation. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, for the month of September, the civil project uh, logged 66,532 hours. Uh, from the start of the project through the end of September, they've worked 2,401,320 hours. And for that month of September, they came in at 9.71% for women. Overall, they're at 8.39. For POCI, they came in at 25.2, and they're at 23.78% overall. Uh, as far as the unspecified hours, in September, it was 0.9, and overall, they're at 0.74. Next slide, please. And this is how the hours broke down. Uh, 601 hours were unspecified. Uh, white women worked 4,417 hours, or 6.64%. Women of color worked 1,972 hours, or 2.96%. Men of color worked 14,792 hours or 22.23%. And white men came in at 44,749 hours or 67%. Next slide, please. And since the start of the project, these are the hours that we're counting for trucking participation. MBE has 28,993 hours, 933 hours, excuse me. ZTS is 4,640 hours, and Rock on Trucks is 3,350 hours. 
And next we go to the systems project. In September, they worked 428 hours. And since the start of their work, they've worked 4,578 hours. They came in at 24.77% for women in September and overall they're at 9.63. Uh, for POCI, they came in at 12.85 and they're at 14.22% overall. And their hours broke down as follows. Uh, white women were 106 hours. Uh, POCI women were at zero. POCI men were at 55. And white men were at 267. And the percentages are noted there. And that is all I have, unless there's any questions. If not, I will turn it over to Krista. Thanks, Elaine. Great job, Thank as you. always. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we start out right now with our new hires, rehires, transfers. So what I like to call our enter exit report for you guys. Um, this last month, oh, we didn't have the transposed numbers from my last meeting. I thought we had the updated slide. That is my bad. Anyways, transfers. Rehires and new hires were pretty much zero, but layoffs were about, to my knowledge, 11 layoffs. And the majority, uh, seven, eight of those layoffs were for white male and uh, the remainder for POCI male. Uh, there were no voluntary leaves um, for that, for the month of October. So you're gonna start seeing those layoffs um, and everything but what i'm going to really quick highlight for you guys during those layoffs a couple of those individuals were people that we had sponsored into the apprenticeship for brand new um time and we took our pro when i say we um we take our gear team the um field operations we have our general suit for part of the project myself and hr as well as their advocate from a program, if they came from one, say building strong communities, we met with that individual apprentice to make sure that they had clear understanding what a seasonal layoff truly does mean, um, gave them resources on how to um, work with the hall. And actually they had, we had representation from their hall with us, you know, to make sure that they got their name on the list and their skills, as well as getting their unemployment started but then also the important piece, and this is our part of the retention, is our advocacy for them during that layoff, is creating a pathway of education resources for them, getting their class schedules, you know, talking to them about what kind of they would like to be doing, what our team would like to see them doing. And these are all recommendations as well as our guarantee to them that we'll be doing about every two week check-in, their advocate and us to see how, how things are coming along, if there's any needs that they have, as well as the open communication that if they get a call from the hall and have an opportunity to go to another contractor, we encourage it, of course, you know, but we will always be there for their resource. So that was a really um, neat thing that we launched this year that to, to be an active part of and everything. So if you could go to the next slide, please. Here, here's our lovely short and condensed list of, of a picture of kind of what our our month looks like at a glance, you know, and um, again, our internal team meeting, you know, with our projections regarding the needs of, you know, with the enter exit, like I just talked about. Um, we have continue our meetings uh, with the Carpenters representatives regarding um, the mentor training program that we are launching um, in less than two weeks for the um, LMJV. Uh, the, these meetings are great, and I can't wait to really get things going with it. Our weekly staff meetings that always include, you know, updates and conversations, as well as education regarding our DBE and workforce participation, what I like to call our inclusion development of our team. So it's those that always continue to be great. Um, Bi-weekly meetings with the GEARS team, which is our internal LMJV team, union representatives, subcontractors, and others. Uh, job site walks um, with continued conversations regarding culture of care with those on, in the field. 
Um, we're going to see a little less of those now moving forward, not just because of layoffs, also because of the weather conditions and safety. Um, we continue our, our meetings with um, our representatives at uh, Department of Human Rights with Elaine. Our phone calls are priceless, reviewing our efforts and participation and really bouncing ideas off of, off of their expertise. And continued ongoing planning with Building Strong Communities. The recruitment with Building Strong is going absolutely fantastic right now. Um, to my knowledge, I was told the other day by Rick, their ED, is they currently have over 400 applications for this next year's um, program. So it's exciting. Continued meetings um, with our advocate over at the Urban League of the Twin Cities, Ms. Norma Miller. She is a great part of our team. Our subcontractor meetings and education series the last month in October that uh, the training was surrounded, you know, the, the topic was inclusion in care and building that environment within our subcontractors also. And the virtual DWEC meeting last month, as well as the awesome Construction Inclusion Week second that took place a couple weeks ago. So if you could go to the next slide. Here's just a quick glance. I could have given you guys over 20 pictures of the great activities that we took place, you know, in that we were active with our LMJB, our, our subcontractors, as well as our other trade partners. Um, we kicked it off by um, our entire LMJV team and others taking the Culture of Care Pledge. Um, I take this very serious, as many of you guys know. Um, it takes all of us working together. We had a booth at the first event with the St. Paul Chamber of Commerce called Career Connection Day. They had it at the River, River Center. And the construction industry was a small piece of the pie. It was Career Connection Day with all the different industries. And it's exciting to know the success of the, the, the event was um, unmeasurable, but enough to the fact that next year it will be a two-day program um, for the Twin Cities, not just St. Paul. Construction will have its entire own area. And um, myself and another uh, representative from Melinda are going to be sitting on the planning committee for this great event sponsored by the St. Paul Chamber and others. Um, like I told you earlier, we hosted the DBE Appreciation Lunch that week. Um, the Culture of Care continued training, not just took place with our pledge and stuff, but we also throughout the week had various emails that I called table talks as well as field toolbox talks surrounded by the Culture of Care and what that looks like. And we ended the week with an awesome collection of all of our entities that the LMJV subcontractors and Lunda pulled together. We collected hats, mittens, scarves, socks, gloves, you name it, um, to um, donate to the Urban League of the Twin Cities. And you can see in the picture there, Miss Norma Miller, that big smile, filling her trunk. We literally filled her trunk in the back seat. And sometime in November, we will be volunteering at an event at the Urban League where we will help distribute those items to the community members, as well as serve them some hot cocoa and hot apple cider and talk about the light rail project. There's that. Next slide. That is it. Does anybody have any questions? If not, I look forward to the next meeting and some really great things on the agenda for us moving forward. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Krista. Uh, next up, APJV. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so uh, we got started work in September. It was nice to break some ground. And um, so, you know, the, just the limited traction power substations that you're seeing that they're building the foundations for. So, you know, we got a little bit of work going in, in September and we picked it up in, uh, in October, which is great. Uh, but we'll, you know, we're getting ready, ready to, to, to plan the work for the spring of 2023. We're also, Aldridge is setting some poles on the track, so that, that's exciting. Um, but we'll really start getting access to the, to the light rail in the spring of 2023. Um, so, um, okay, we attended, this is, uh, we attended mock interviews. Um, 
at Summit Academy last week on Friday. We were also part of a lower tier subcontractor, the outreach event on September 21. And then um, the APJV, we um, participated in a day of training at Summit Academy. They have 40 cohort students. The training was um, was really re received positively. We were talking to everybody in the, in the mock interviews and the students that we had the mock interviews really had great things to say about it. Um, but we had three three different class sessions going on throughout the day. We had the IIF, which is incident and injury free. We had, uh, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, so up in the upper left hand corner, we had uh, we had union representatives from local 292 with Derek Atkins, the head of the JATC, Crystal from um, Crystal Gregory from local 160. We had Laura come and talk to him. We had one of our project managers talk to him, uh, you know, present what life of the electrician, that kind of good stuff. Over in the underground trailers, um, I don't know, I got a block up there. This is our utility training trailer that travels the nation. We take it to job sites. Uh, people request it uh, for us. Uh, but basically underground, a lot of stuff they'll see, transformers, um, underground wiring cabling talking about working underground in this in the sewer systems one of the guys said to me i didn't realize that you guys climb underground and, and do electrical work underground so that was neat um and then down at the bottom we had the iif training which is injury and incident free to let them know how seriously we take safety and how to be not just on our work our work life but also uh, taking it home and all of our activities so uh, it was a really positive day for these students, and um, we'll um, we'll go from there. I think that's it for the APJV. Thanks, Mike. Any questions for Mike and APJV? Krista, I have something I forgot to include, but I don't have it. I have a comment for Mike. Uh oh, are you ready, Mike? Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. I still. And I've I've gone on to talk to other people about seriously your event at Summit Academy to watch somebody outside of the the general contractor realm that I've lived in you know and breathe in to watch what you guys and your team did for Summit Academy again um, kudos seriously to you guys it it is awesome to see. Um, and the amount of work that truly goes into it, because it just wasn't a presentation given to a classroom, you know, to see the hands on stuff, to see the kids, adults, you know, you know me, if it's an apprentice, it's a kid, you know, I'm going to refer to it that way. Um, you guys above and beyond great job, Aldrich Electric, you know, and Aldrich companies and everybody that came from all over, you know, to really support you and to support the systems contract. Um, it's great. Um, but to back up, and I apologize, everybody, I'll make it short and sweet. You know how I, I like things short and sweet. Um, first of all, let me kick off by saying to everybody, number one, happy National Apprenticeship Week. It takes all of us working together to support our apprentices. Number two, even better, because of who I am, happy Women in Apprenticeship Day nationally. Um, thank you, Dale, and just my project leads for supporting it we did a project proclamation acknowledging um the the great teams we have on this project and when i talk about teams you guys know i talk about all of us working together government educators contractors union our community organizations you guys this week has been crazy busy but awesome today this is my eighth event slash meeting of the day I have to actually, I'll be sending out, you guys all got an email about an event that took place earlier this morning. Um, it was the Women Building Success and Mindali's, um, you know, apprenticeship group put on a panel this morning that I will be sharing their videos um, that were trade representatives from the carpenters, electricians, iron workers, and the 49ers. Their, their stories were incredible, but what was even better is we did a viewing party down at Lunda Construction, you guys, where I had our leadership team and our director of field ops who's going out at the end of the year and our new one coming in, as well as others attend this. 
to watch the panelists from each one of those trades and their smiles talking about the pride of being in the construction industry was unbelievable. And to top it off, which was even better for the Lunda family, including myself, the pride um, and the success to see of Akethia Lloyd, who started her apprenticeship back in, she went to Summit Academy. She started at Summit Academy, you guys, as one of the janitors. She saw their program and got so interested. She took it, went through their training, was sponsored by Lunda as a brand new apprentice, journeyed out through Lunda Construction, you guys, and then went on to be um, to transition over into the as a business rep for the 49ers. I will be sending their videos to you guys to be able to watch. Truly take the time to watch and listen. They're very heartwarming stories of everybody's thanks to everybody's working together. It's happening. It's going on, you guys. So keep it going. Hey, thanks, Johnny. <laughs> and believe it or not, you guys, that's it. Thanks for letting me jump in. Okay, I want to chime back in and also congratulate um, Mike, Tony, and Aldridge for the presentation, the training they did at Summit Acad Academy. It was amazing. Um, the young people were so engaged and excited, and I was really excited to see all of the diversity among um, the students that that were enrolled in this. Um, I really, I really commend your team, Mike. It was great. Thank you for for doing that, and thank you for inviting me. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Elaine. This looks like you and uh, Shanti are at the same place. We have, we have, uh, we're, we're on opposite sides, but yes. Adjoining rooms. <laughs> so, um, last meeting, we had a lot of conversation about you know, really being more strategic um, about our meetings moving forward, how we want to structure our meetings, um, the frequency in which we want to meet, um, and then, you know, the planning that goes into kind of being more uh, strategic and thoughtful, um, taking a month to kind of really strategize and, and get the input um, and move forward for 2023 in a new uh, a new light with a new um, frame of mind and a new perspective. Um, so um, one of the first steps that we wanted to do based on the discussion from last time is uh, we sent out a survey relative to kind of, you know, what we kind of saw is two options and then available for, you know, another option if, if that was, uh, if someone had a better idea, but uh, really it came down to um, doing what we did last year, meeting every other month over the over the winter and getting started back month monthly, I believe April, um, or um, taking the month of December to really plan and be strategic about how we move forward, and then continuing uh, with a new format and monthly meetings starting uh, January um, and and going monthly throughout. Um, there was also some discussion about the structure um, and, you know, how we can structure to be more uh, productive and conducive to uh, the interests uh, of, of committee members so that they can use their, their time. And I think um, as co-chairs, uh, when Tyler and I thought about this, and I'll let Tyler speak as well, um, you know, we don't, we don't really want to be, we, we are a part of this committee. Um, just like everyone else, and we don't want to be uh, in the position to dictate structure, how we, we really want uh, this to be a collaborative effort and want the input um, to come from this, this committee um, and not be uh, dictated by uh, the Department of Human Rights and the Metropolitan Council. 
Um, so we have thought about and had some discussions on how that might work um, and, and maybe um, pulling together some folks that are interested in really uh, planning out how we'll move forward in terms of structure, et cetera. That said, um, well, first, let me just turn it over to Tyler and see if he wants to add anything before uh, John presents the survey results. Hey, uh, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I think everything you touched on would, I would echo um, all of that. You know, um, it, it, it would have been easy enough, or I guess easier for Ashanti and I to kind of just plug away for an hour and figure out, okay, what do we want it to look like instead? Um, but I think what we're hoping to achieve is a time and space set aside, because we also recognize and understand that time is, is not always an easy commodity for people to come by. So recognizing the value of all of you guys and the value of your time, we want to make sure that this space uh, together is utilized to to everybody's best interest. Um, you know, we had already kind of talked about some some minor, well, I guess not necessarily minor uh, tweaks and changes, such as some of the data driven stuff being sent out beforehand to free up some space for maybe some other um, conversation. Um, and things such as that. So th there are some minor things, but is what I'm what I'm hoping to get out of um, a discussion, you know, after after John is able to kind of show the results of the survey and stuff is I I really would like to hear from the rest of the group as to hey, we're all here together sharing the same time and space like what what would you like to see? We're rewriting, you know, wiping the slate. So what are some things that maybe haven't been present and, and agenda items that you would like to see brought forth with this group? Because I think this group is in a very unique perspective. Just the collaborative minds that make up who's on this call is really a unique opportunity for, for us to really have some quality conversations. And, and that's what I want to get at. But with that said, I think we need to identify what are those very intentional and um, meaningful points for everybody. Because I think everybody also has different points of interest. You know, there's some overlap, but there's also some difference as well. So that's what Ashanti and I, you know, kind of our, our, Big dream picture with what we're hoping to see come out of this is I, I don't envision walking away, you know, this afternoon having firm dead set decisions made. But I, I want to start the conversation and at least offer up as well that if there are folks on this call that would like to be a part of this decision making and change process, that is something that I would like to at least have in hand when, when we when we wrap up so that we can go from there. But um, with that said, Ashanti, if, unless you have anything else to add, I can turn it over to John to go over the survey results. Krista, I see your message and I'll write you down. Okay. Thank you, everybody. So uh, we sent out the survey uh, last week sometime and uh, was trying to give everybody as much time as possible to look at their schedules and uh, respond back. And then we closed it on Monday here, end of day on Monday. And we got 13 responses. Of the responses, um, you know, we are showing the responses for here and also for the um, subcommittee. So proposal A, as Ashanti shared, was to uh, skip out on December and then uh, also skip out on February and meet every other month. So that would mean uh, November, January, March, and then we would continue on in April. So it would be monthly from March on. And then uh, seven of the responses was uh, no and five yes. So this one did not um, get that much support. Next slide, please. Proposal B was to skip out on December 
and then just start monthly in January on forward. So this one got nine responses for yes. And this one got the most support. I also want to share that uh, there is a other option there. And the other option was from a person responding, saying uh, they had no strong preference with either option. So I just wanted to make sure that we were able to capture that and show that too. And then uh, next slide. So uh, the next steps in this, oops, sorry, I think I might have skipped. So, um, ah, oh, and then the other responses we got for the subcommittee was uh, trying to select a uh, day and week, a week and a day to meet. Uh, on a regular monthly basis. And from those options that were put out there, uh, the one that got the most response was the first Thursday of the month, and then fourth Thursday of the month, and then somebody responded, uh, or we also had the third Friday of the month, which would, on a regular schedule with what we got going on here, that would end up being the day after the committee that we have here. So if we was to put that one into play, uh, tomorrow would be when we would have the subcommittee meeting. So that's just an example. I think that the next steps for um, the discussion here would be to select uh, for the subcommittee would be to find out if people want, or do they want the morning or the afternoon for the meeting and then how long of a meeting should this subcommittee be? And then um, for this subcommittee, uh, should it be led by one of the members here or should there be a external stakeholder that uh, would like to lead this work? So that's some of the ideas that are put out there. And I'm gonna turn it back to the co-chairs for the discussion. Yeah, I think um, as Tyler kind of just alluded to, we really want to hear from from you as committee members in in terms of what you would like to see, um, and also um, hear from folks that would be interested in uh, well, Ted, I sitting have down and having a meeting to kind of plan out how so how we I move forward. Photo. I have all the letters of intent, letter of intent for top line. Okay, now top line. Mike, I think you're um, you're you're uh, broadcasting to everybody. <laughs> and I'm just gonna read. This is Barb. Um, I'm just gonna kick it off here with some discussion. Yeah. Um, I looked for this in the survey, and so I was still. If we could clarify, we had talked about potentially separating uh, workforce and DBE and having um, two separate meetings or half the meeting be one and half the meeting be the other or something. And uh, there seemed to be some appetite from um, the ed participants at that time. So I'd be kind of looking to see um, if that was part of it because there might be things you need more monitoring of and less um, depending on the survey results of the group. Um, so that's one of the first things I'd want to know is if that is something that we are going to entertain or not. Um. Yeah, I, you know, that that's kind of really, and, and I don't, um, I thought it was a uh, valid kind of consideration. I think where uh, we're coming from as, as co-chairs is, we don't want to make that decision um, in those types of format changes decisions without the input from from committee members we certainly could and we certainly mm -hmm. can take that and then just make a decision but i guess uh, one of the outcomes that we would like for this is for folks that are interested in seeing some sort of format changes input changes content um, suggestions mm -hmm. to to actually get together for a meeting and and kind of get those those kinds of best practices or recommendations or decisions uh, presented to the committee. 
So that's kind of my thought, uh, Barb. Yes, we talked about that, um, but we talked about that along with some of the other things um, in a whole and, and wanting to be uh, collaborative in terms of how we, we make those sorts of decisions. Yeah, Barb, I, I would say to answer your question, um, would it be considered? I, I mean, I, yeah. Yes, it, it. I think any this what Ashanti and I are hoping to have is kind of an open open door, kind of like if you want to throw something on the table, throw it on the table, and then we as a, a whole collective. So, for example, you know, you want to throw out there um, s slicing the meeting into two halves to separate out DBE and workforce. You know, if that's something that as the the whole collective is is on board with. And, you know, I think that there are certainly advantages to that. Um, there's reasons, you know, potentially reasons for both sides to do it or not to do it. But I'd like to hear from from those that would be in favor. And then uh, inversely, if anyone would be opposed to that, I'd like to hear as as to why that would be as well. But I think that absolutely it's it's on the table for discussion. And if the consensual kind of decision amongst the group is that, yep, that's fine, that works, that makes sense, then that would be something that we could we could roll with. Okay, guys, to clarify, because I guess I'm still confused and maybe this was talked about at the first half hour of the meeting. So right now, are we specifically just looking at what time slots and when we're meeting? Because Ashanti, when you said you would hope that somebody could come back and present something about an option like that, um, is that another whole subcommittee? Is that the subcommittee? I'm just confused on where where we're sitting right now. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, Tyler. Yeah, I wanted to be very clear about not calling it another subcommittee. Um, for sure, I was very specific when when uh, we discussed this. When I say we, uh, MDHR folks and Met Council folks, no. Um, I think just based on what we heard from the survey. The overwhelming support would be to take this month off for December and plan. Um, and again, Tyler and I could do that uh, alone. Um, but I think we just want to have like one meeting with folks who are interested and want to, um, uh, uh, you know, really plan this out. Again, we we know we have that, and that's definitely something that we talked about. Your recommendation. So if that's something and, and you want to put on the table, but you don't want to participate in the meeting, that will be that will still be part of, you know, what we consider in terms of training uh, of changes. Uh, so then, so now what I'm hearing you say, just maybe you clarified for me. Okay. We're looking at timing for when we come back and convene after December, because it looks like both options didn't want to meet in December, and that the subcommittee is actually to determine the direction of the uh, future meetings. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, the sub-meeting. Okay. <laughs> sub-meeting. The, 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 the subcommittee. Sub the subcommittee, and maybe, Ashanti, we need to rebrand it so that we just stop using that word subcommittee, because it really is not intended to be uh, to, it is not the subcommittee, for lack of better <laughs> terminology as of now, is not intended to be an off branch of this specific particular group. It was it was kind of rooted out of it because a lot of the members that are that join the first one are on this group. But the difference between our intent here and and what the content and the topics that we will be discussing in this meeting. Will there will be correlation, but it will not be have necessarily connection to what we to discuss in the quote subcommittee. The subcommittee intent of that is to address an industry practices and how to we we certainly will take things that we have seen and learned from this group and from this project and and carried forward. But we'll also take things, look back at. What did we learn from capital restoration? What did we learn from Vikings? What did we learn from, you know, heavy, all the various heavy highway plus vertical construction projects, whatever people bring to the table to address industry practices and how do we forge a future where equity and inclusion maintains an upward trajectory? Does, you know, how do we re-engage and re-energize relationships with various, you know, 
halls and partners, et cetera, to ensure that the pipeline and the workforce and the opportunity remains interconnected so we continue to see that upward momentum that we're hoping to, to achieve here on an industry-wide basis. So we could take things but that industry we- Industry-wide on industry workforce. Yes. Thank you. So, so Tyler, yes. the, the, the objective is the objective also that you're looking at this committee as you look forward to the next projects that come down the pike and how you can help inform things moving forward based on what you're learning from past. Yes, sir. That's my kind of vision and shared at least. And again, I, I want it to be a collaborative like conversation of what the group ends up being. What I'm hoping to see come out of the, and I, I'm going to keep using it until we come up with something different. Ashanti, maybe you and I got to throw a bunch of different names in a bucket and pick one. But this subcommittee, <laughs> yes, what I'm hoping to see come out of the subcommittee is, you know, um, sharing of resources so that come future forward facing future projects some of the things that we have that have gone that people have learned work get passed along relationships and, and those networks continue to grow and furthermore the things that we've seen from experience didn't work let's stop repeating things that clearly have shown themselves to be ineffective and not work um so that's what i envision the subcommittee. And again, it, it, it mostly, you're right, Barb, will apply to from a workforce perspective of how to continue to feed that workforce pipeline more so than necessarily a, a DBE standpoint. And then can I ask one more question? Because I'm going to have to run to another mm -hmm. meeting. But so are you thinking the subcommittee would meet in December? Because that's a month you're going to take off, or are you thinking the subcommittee not until no everybody comes back in that January time frame? I would, I, I would, Ashanti. I'm thinking not until everyone comes back. The only thing that I think we were hoping to convene on in December is, um, like a quick hitter on the restructure of this DWAC meeting. Yes. So at you know we can start once the subcommittee gets up and running. Like uh, we're gonna put a big wall up between this this crew and the subcommittee crew because there will be again there will be spots that we can kind of high five each other, but they're not gonna be. You know they're two separate entities when it's when it's gonna be all said and done. So December would be to convene to discuss how we want to restructure these DWAC meetings now that things like the the data report outs are going to be sent out ahead of time like reframing what sort of content and discussion we want to hold for this time with this group yes thank you tyler i didn't i didn't articulate that very well that's okay <laughs> I fumbled, I, I fumbled, I, I managed to fumble um, effectively this time. So I saw Krista, you kind of raised your hand. Dan, I saw your note. Is there anyone else? And, and if you want some time to kind of ponder, please just like shoot Ashanti and I, one of us, just an email letting us know if you would like to um, be a part of that conversation for this uh, meeting. Let me just double check the chat here. If that uh, planning meeting, because that's what I'm going to call it, it's not, it's yeah. not a subcommittee. If the yeah. planning meeting uh, is virtual, um, I maybe in, uh, I would like to have my hat thrown in that. If it is in person, okay. I'm having surgery the beginning of December and would not be able to be in person, and so then I would just like shoot you stuff. But I would imagine it will be virtual. Tyler, I just shot a message in the chat. This is Sheila. I would be okay. interested, and I know Julie's not here to, 
today. I know she's in a different meeting I need to get to. Okay. So I'm sure she would be uh, saying the same, but I know John Clem is here representing her. So I will let John go with it from there. Okay. So thanks. Thank you. Looks like we got Gilbert's interested as well and Elaine. Great. Yeah, like like Tyler said, um, if after this meeting you you decide you want to participate as well, shoot us an email. Um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to um, 2023 um, and a clearer and more efficient way forward and something that we all can um that will maximize our our time and it's yes for julie as well all right okay thanks sheila um did i hear right that this uh pro project has been um uh extended and that completion is like four years from now i'm just kind of wondering how long this meeting thing is going to be coming Do we have, uh, is Nick still on? David, you want to? Yeah, no, I'm here. This is oh, Nick. Okay. Yeah, uh, was that Barb? Yeah, hi, Nick. Hi. Um, uh, yeah, so there's a contract extension um, until September 2025 for the civil contract right now. We're still working out the details with the systems contractor on what that looks like. And I think... Um, We've stated the revenue service date to be sometime in 2027 right now. But we don't, yeah, we don't have any other details right now because we're still working out the schedules. That's all public. Yep, thanks. I just was, when we're, we're, when we're talking planning and we're looking at this committee and what we want out of it, you know, it's, it's, are, are, we, are we looking at meeting for another Three years, two years, whatever it is. Right. That's, I was just kind of clarifying. Yeah, no, I just, I just wanted to make sure that every, everybody knows where we're currently at with, the, with regards to contract extensions. All right. Thank you, everyone, for that conversation. Um, at this time, we want to make uh, some room for announcements. And given that I have the mic, I'm going to go first. Um, first, I will say that we did um, complete our semi-annual second half FTA report and final uh, federal fiscal year 2022 report that is due to be submitted to F2 FTA December 1st. Um, and we will be well, tentatively on the Transportation Committee to present that information. So if you like watching committee meetings or coming in person over at uh, Haywood in downtown Minneapolis for that uh, meeting on the 28th, um, come on down. Um, but that is complete and it's going to be submitted. Um, uh, if not, uh, probably before the first, right after that meeting, since it's already completed. Um, also, I may have mentioned this last time, we are doing an equity audit or assessment of our uh, contracting, procurement, um, and administration of our small business programs, specifically the DBE and our MCUB program, um, and uh, looking for a third party to do that, you know, make recommendations, um, identify barriers. Part of that will be reaching out to many of you who have expertise and insight um, through um, conversations, focus groups, surveys, et cetera, um, and, and some analysis. Um, so that is uh, going to be advertised prior to the end of uh, this year. Um, there, there's actually a 20% goal on that uh, uh, particular procurement opportunity. Um, and also, if you know folks that uh, do assessment work um, and that are that would be interested in bidding on this, um, also please uh, pass word or give them my contact information if they have questions. 
prior to it being advertised. After that, um, they will be in contact with our procurement folks. Um, also, uh, our triennial uh, goal that is will be due to FTA in August. Um, historically, the Metropolitan Council has done that in-house. We will be looking at doing that with a third party as well. Um, so um, that is also something that will be coming out. I'm not sure about, don't have exact time frames, but uh, hopefully soon um, that is something that we'll be uh, looking to contract for as well. And then um, I was I did attend, attend part of the SADBOC meeting. So and I don't know if we have anyone from MnDOT on on the call today, but I know that MnDOT and PTAC have entered into a partnership um, to provide training for small businesses. I know some of the training that uh, uh, they are doing is uh, financing your business uh, capability statements. Um, and some other trainings that are kicking off in December. Um, I'm sure there's information on our website, uh, but again, um, yes, I would reach out to MnDOT and PTAC folks for more information on that. And one thing that I would like to just pass along, especially for our uh, community-based and uh, nonprofits that uh, recently, um, the council approved uh, pay raises for our operators um, to starting pay is $26 an hour. And then also um, uh, signing bonus. Uh, if you have your CDL already, it's 5,000. If you don't have your CDL at the time, it's 3,000. So um, that is it's good news. Um, if, if everybody does not know, we are there is a driver shortage. Um, and um, uh, we're hoping that that will make us uh, a lot more competitive. Um, same thing with our internships. That'll be uh, advertising. We're, we're looking at doing internships earlier uh, this year so that uh, students have time to plan and know what their plans are for the summer. Also increase those wages as well for interns. Um, again, um, hopefully to make us more competitive. And that's all I have, unless anyone has questions for me. Any other announcements from committee members that they would like to make? All right, Tyler. All right, uh, public invitation. Um, I do not believe we have anybody pre-registered to speak. Yep, that's correct, Tyler. All right, um, our next meeting is January 19th, and again, we'll be taking December to plan. We will send something out um, informational wise to folks um, so that they have that information. I wanna say thank you um, to all the committee members and alternates uh, for your contributions and participation in today's meeting. Um, enjoy the rest of the year, enjoy the holiday season. Um, and you can always stay connected through our construction updates, social media, the project website, and you can also connect with me or Tyler uh, anytime. And with hey, that, Shante, yes. Wait, before you say adjourn, um, will the council be sending out a new appointment schedules for the 2023 uh, meetings? Because they're not on our calendar. Yes, we will. Okay. All right. Just wanted to remind you all. Thank you. Yep. All right. With that, we will adjourn. Adjourn. Take care, everybody. Thank you all.
Thank you. Merry right. Christmas, happy, happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, everyone. Hi, happy everyone. Thanksgiving and Merry Christmas. Sorry for the interruption.